What is up guys, Wolfgang here. So today I want to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. First of all, I want to thank you guys for the 520 subscribers that they are that I have right now. Mostly wanting to celebrate every multiple of two. So in this case, 512, but this time we exceeded it a little bit uh, as I haven't really recorded a video in a while. But I really want to thank you guys as I've been enjoying doing YouTube. And seeing you guys watch my videos and, you know, be willing to subscribe means a lot to me. But anyways, let's get back to the video. The main reason I hadn't really recorded videos is because there wasn't really anything that excited me being released. However, I found a couple products that really did ex excite me in, back into tech. And, well, I definitely have purchased them, as you can kind of get a glimpse of one of them um, in, in the camera frame. But um, the Buds 3 are one of them. This is a spoiler for one more, and uh, i got to wait a little bit longer to show the third one. But the point is, we're talking about the Buds 3 today, Buds 3 Pro. So, the case, the design has changed quite a lot. Before, the Buds 2, Buds uh, 2 Pros, the live, no, all the live similar, but um, all the ones that came before the 3s, had a very similar design to the to these that I have in my hand right now. These are the Buds 2 Pro, my previous uh, daily driver. Um, and you know, pretty simple design. It's kind of like a kind of just goes into your ear, doesn't really stick out, didn't have a stem like Apple or anything. And you know, they work pretty well. All they would be is sort of like a you know, it would fit inside your ear. So this is a pretty solid design. If you're trying to like sleep with your phones, these work very well. But then for the Buds 3, they did the pretty big change in design where now it's kind of copying sort of the Apple sort of um, AirPods where they have a little stem, which I gotta be honest, I actually have really enjoyed. I thought I wouldn't really like it because it's kind of copying them, but um, truth be told, I gotta admit, this is a superior design and it's been working out well. So. Continue with talking about the design, uh, you might have seen the blade lights go on. These do have lights on them. I think it's pretty silly, in my opinion. Um, there's not much you can do with those. So there's some effects that you can control in the app, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, going back into design. The earbuds themselves have a sort of triangular stem, which is interesting. Um, to interact with the controls though, you don't really like pinch on the main size of the stem. You want to support your thumb sort of on the back of it. And let's see if I can see that well, um, on the back of it. And there's sort of a flat-ish area up top, where, which is where you want to interact with it on this side. So there's another angle that might help potentially. But yeah, um, very very different design to the previous ones. I enjoy it. As far as I can tell, they do not look at all like the AirPods Pro just because they're silver, but I, I enjoy the design and it's definitely superior in my opinion. First of all, because the microphone is a little bit further from your ear or, you know, closer to your, to your mouth, so it can hear your voice better, which is a huge plus as the Buds 2 Pro had a pretty bad microphone. Um, and then also this allows for more touch controls. So you can slide your hand or your thumb or finger in general downwards and upwards on the backside to control volume. And then by squeezing, you can control playback. So like play, skip, pause, next, uh, previous song. Really nice. Honestly, uh, it's, it's superior. That's all I can say. I'm trying to tap your ear or tap, tap the earbud a bunch of times that sometimes if you do it too hard is really annoying. It makes a really annoying sound. Um, aside from that, the design of the case itself feels to have gotten a lot uh, thinner. Uh, it's not really that much actually, but it is, it is, it is something. And, um, one benefit is that it's now a lot more slippery, we'll say. Um, it's not as textured as the previous ones. So this slides into your pocket a lot easier than uh, the previous generations. In the case itself, I feel like is a lot more prone to scratches, but I have dropped it once and it still looks fine. So 
we'll see how it keeps up in the long term. A little bit of a transparent top here. I, I don't know why you would want it, but it's there. And well, so that's wireless charging and type C port down here. And you know, the pairing button, if you're not using a Samsung device, this should make it easier to pair to stuff. Yeah, that's about it for design. Um, next thing I want to talk about would mainly be the sound quality itself. So as I've mentioned in several of my videos, especially when talking about the uh, earphones I main, for me to buy something like earphones, and like upgrade, it's gotta be worth the money. So for example, if I bought the Buds 2 Pro for, I don't know, $150, and I buy these for 100, or let's say 200, these have to actually be $200 better than my previous ones, because I already have these, I already spent the money and I can't return them or anything. I might be able to sell them, but the point is that this has to be worth it, it has to be worth the upgrade. When it comes to sound quality, it's kind of crazy, but they are worth the money. Um, not only because of the improvements in the drivers and in the sound itself, but the application allows you to change the equalizer, which was a huge, um, upgrade from the previous generation where you only had presets. This one has presets and custom, which means a lot to me, especially since I've already played with EQ a bit for the, for my main earphones, as well as for headphones in the past from Sony which offer the same feature of equalizing it, and that'll apply for anywhere you plug the earphones in. The sound quality is worth it, and being able to equalize it makes it amazing, and I've just truly enjoyed these earphones in terms of sound. What I am not loving right now is the silicone tips, um, as I prefer the foam tips. I, I used to I used to think I was allergic to silicone ear tips, but I think it's just my ear adapting to it. I tend to use memory foam as it seals better, um, feels better in my ear as well, and causes less irritation or less itchiness, at least in my ear. Um, after using these for a bit, it doesn't really affect me either. I still once I still have signed up for notifications whenever. Um, Comply Foam, the brand I normally use for these foam tips. Once they release a version for the Buds 3 Pro, I will 100% be buying them and installing them, as uh, we'll get into noise cancelling in a bit. But as far as sound quality goes, these sound amazing and they fit really well in my ear. The silicone tips do not really bother me anymore, even though memory foam would be really nice. Now going into noise cancelling, which is even more worth the money than the sound quality itself. Uh, noise cancelling on the Buds 2 Pro, very solid. And the memory foam tips help a lot as well to drown out some of the higher pitched noises, which is what noise cancelling can't really drown out. In this case, I felt it was going to be a bit of an issue because, well, there's less of a physical barrier between your ear and the outside as these, um, you know how they have the stem facing out, facing downwards, really? Uh, this side, you know, the part that kind of like sticks in your ear is actually smaller. So I figured they would probably be worse, even if their noise cancelling algorithms and stuff were better. Well, turns out I was wrong. Um, even with the silicone tips, the Buds 3 Pro's noise cancelling is better than the Buds 2 Pro with uh, memory foam ear tips. To be clear, there are circumstances there are sounds high pitch sounds um you know something like a clap per se or a bell sometimes there are sounds that you can still hear through the noise canceling um, of the buds 3 pro that would definitely be uh reduced on the buds 2 pro that is because of the comply foam tips i'm pretty sure um I'm, I'm hoping those get released soon so I can, you know, make an updated video on how much I love these. Um, but for the time being, we're stuck with them as they are. I do want to say with the noise cancelling, there is one strange thing that happened to me. It seems that if I max out the noise cancelling amount, I could, the noise cancelling is reduced, perhaps? I don't know how to say it, but I have to leave the noise cancelling one notch under its max noise cancelling. And that provides a better noise cancelling experience than the Buds 2 Pro. If I left it maxed out, I would probably have returned these. But thank goodness I played with that, and these these sound amazing. 
Now, in the application, there are a couple features um, that I want to talk about. But first of all, I do want to say that a lot of these features are, well, I guess I won't even bring them up. A lot of the new features for the Buds 3 Pro are locked behind One UI 6.1.1. As I'm on a Fold 5, as of the recording of this video, I do not have that version of Android. So I can't really talk much about these features, but I will be talking about the ones that I do have available. All right, so this is gonna be a recording with the um, microphones of the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. So this is kind of to give you an idea of what it sounds like, at least as of right now, before I get the actual update to 6.1.1. Anyways, this is the application. And like I said, the active noise canceling I have reduced by one notch. If I increase it fully, I mean, in a quiet environment, it sounds fine, but with more noise, um, it definitely sounds worse. So I would recommend leaving it at one notch under the maximum. Of course, in the application, you get all the features in the top, you know, get active noise cancelling adaptive, which uh, adjusts the amount of noise cancelling and offers you features. Adjusts the amount of active noise cancelling and offers features like if you're talking, it'll uh, turn on the ambient sound or if it hears a siren or stuff like that. It's a pretty neat feature. I don't use it. I only really use active noise cancelling or ambient mode fully, which, you know, right here you can adjust the amount of ambient noise that you want. Now the ambient mode... Now the ambient sound mode itself is really good. Um, much better than the Buds 2 Pro. Definitely an upgrade. And, yeah, I've been able to do basically everything with the ambient mode on. And, of course, you get the off option as well. I'll leave ambient mode on for now just to be able to hear my voice and no, I'm not talking too loud as you know that happens to everyone. If you go to the sound quality and effects options you of course got 360 audio and the equalizer like I said. Uh, I didn't really do much in terms of adjusting this as it's maybe not the best equalizer ever used as um, I would describe it as if you raise one band it'll lower the others instead of really raising that for the band you want to raise. So it's a bit interesting to play around with, but at least it's an equalizer and I really appreciate having it and I can play around it, so it's fine. You also get these adjust sound to fit, which I recommend to leave on as it will try to adjust the sound regardless of your, or I guess playing around the inconsistency of how they fit in your ear as sometimes you know because of your ear size this may not have the best fit and lastly of course the earbud test let's give it a shot real quick to see how they fit in my ear right now i think the left one might be um they both have poor fit right now according to the app uh, might be because of the transparency mode but regardless um you know you have that option if you ever want to test them out oh well, they feel like they're fine in my ear and they're creating a really good seal, so I'm not sure what that's about. But um, for now, we can keep going with the ambient sound. Um, then if we go to earbud controls, here's more of the controls I was talking about. So if we, you can tap in there to get a bit more of a detailed explanation from them. But here's the playback controls, as well as the controlling volume. Really solid controls, honestly. Now you do get some options with uh, what pinching and holding does. I think... You know, controlling noise controls is the best one. But of course, you can also get Bixby, the interpreter, which I have not used, and mindfulness, which I have not used either. But then of course, you know, the call controls, you want to pinch if you want to answer a call, and pinch and hold if you want to decline it. And well, here you can adjust the lighting you want on the earbuds. Uh, they should turn on. No, they're not on right now. But um, yeah, this is where you would control the effects you want on your earbuds. I, like I said, leave them off. But it could be useful, for example, uh, for bike riders or, you know, if you're walking and it's kind of dark, you can use that to improve visibility. Maybe not, it won't be the best option, but it's an option. Now in settings, there's a lot of stuff here, but the main things I want to touch on are voice controls, as this has been pretty nice. If your hands are not the cleanest at the time, then you have the option to, if this is feature is enabled, right here, voice controls, you can, oh, 
I guess there's also, oh yeah, I guess you can adjust the language, but um, you can control, you know, with these phrases under here, you can control your music to uh, do it hands-free. And it works very well, so long as you remember the phrases. Um, for example, stop music, I keep forgetting and try to say pause, but um, right there it activated, which, yeah, that's not exactly perfect, not ideal. I would expect it to only activate in like, if that's all you say, but it also activates mid phrase. So just keep that in mind. Now, in ear detection, you can make it pause media when you remove an earbud. You know, switch calls to ambient mode so you can hear yourself. I'm not going to read too much into these, but you, know, you have the read notifications for it to read things out loud from specific apps. Seamless earbud connection to switch between different uh, Samsung devices you own. Next stretch, of course, you know what that means. There's a gaming mode, which in theory improves um, the latency on the earbuds. So it, it sound or it makes the sound quicker in your ear. Of course, reset accessibility is worth looking at, as you can have noise controls with one earbud. I have really loved having this um, on. Because there are times I only wear one earbud, and I really love having the sound that noise cancelling provides. So I have turned this feature on, and I love it. Um, and of course you can also have hearing enhancements for ambient sound. Now this sounds pretty strange, but I guess you can get a, uh, you can make it adapt. I'm going to turn this off for now. I do not like it, but I can play around with that. And yeah, from there you got the updates, diagnostics, and about the earphones. Um, so that's it for the earbud settings. And of course you get the find my earbuds features, which, you know, they will make a loud noise, so I'm definitely not activating that right now. But yeah, this is the app for now. The microphone is, will have one more feature. I think it's called like clear voice, if I'm not mistaken, that will make it sound better, at least during calls. But as of right now, as I do not have Android 6.1.1, this is all the features that I have in my app. Now, very quickly, this is a recording on the Galaxy Buds 3 Pro. Um, I'm not sure if perhaps um, once I got the Android 6.1.1 update on my Fold 5, if it enabled something like Bluetooth microphone use, I'm pretty sure I had that setting on all the time. Um, but just wanted to record this to make sure that it, well, you can get an accurate mic test. All right, so as of right now, those are all the features in the application. Um, I will be making a follow-up video as soon as I get Android 6.1.1 on my phone, as I am interested in some of the features that are in there. But as of right now, I would say if you can find these on a deal, these are absolutely worth it. Um, if you're on the Buds 2 Pro, maybe try to do a trade-in, I would recommend that. Um, and also make sure you try these on before, as the fit may not be perfect for you, and give it some time. Um, it might take maybe a day or so, I don't know, maybe three hours of use, just to get, like, used to it, because that's a lot of, of what happens with earphones, especially I've noticed with the in-ear monitors. That it takes a bit like you can't judge it on the first 15 minutes of use you gotta you know kind of get used to it per se uh, you know understand what you what these earphones are good at and what you want from them just give them just give it a bit of time and you know from there you can decide if you really like them or not of course don't go over your trade-in period or your return period for the earphones but yeah give them some time try them out and let me know what you think um so yeah, that's about it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and the subscribe button, as well as leave a comment if you have any thoughts you want to share. I'll try to respond to all the comments I can. Um, and once again, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.